I, I, let's have a public torture, then you know what torture is, okay? Come and torture me, then get somebody to torture me so you understand what I'm talking about, like that. And of course, they made enormous fun about that, of him. And, 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 but they lost, they lost, because he captured the imagination of everyone. The book is remarkable. The thing is, the book leaves out the reason why he was taken in, which was his involvement with Greiver. And I asked him why he did that. He said, well, you, you know, you can't bring in those things, that, they're irrelevant. <laughs> in a way, he's right, because the book would have lost an enormous oh, I, amount. I, see, I, see. Right. I mean, the book has tremendous impact, because you've left out all those extraneous things. If, if he, I mean, regardless of why he did it, he did the right thing, in a way. Right. But, right. I personally, if I had been writing the book, I wouldn't have left that important amount. I would have said, you know, the reason that they came for me in the first place was because and then I would have said the truth about Dry, but he doesn't, he leaves it all out of the book. So the book becomes very pure, but not pure. Right. <laughs> very pure in its uh, coverage of what they did to him, and revealing of what they were like, and it's truthful, I don't have any doubt about that, that he's told the absolute truth. But there was an attempt to say he was never tortured there, even one of the reasons that I was not at all friendly to a man called Anderson was because... To, to whom? This um, Martin Anderson. Oh, Martin Anderson. turns out to be right. rather fine, but he's... He, but I, was because he insisted to me that he had... he had sources among the military, who, and he was absolutely convinced that Timmerman was never tortured. It was a lie. Timmerman made up the whole thing. It's just not true. I mean, and this I knew because while Timmerman was being tortured, his, his brother was telling me about the torture and that he managed yeah, to communicate to him. And Marshall knew about it. Marshall Mayer knew about it. So, I was trying to say something earlier, and it just it helps me to be able to say these things. In Argentina, you have a situation which is very hard to dis describe. It's, it's when everybody kind of knows what the truth is, but it can't be stated for weird reasons. I mean, and there was a situation like that in. Argentina at that time with the with the newspapers it was really quite clear that the government was out to destroy those two newspapers using Papel Prensa and using Timmerman's claim that they got Papel Prensa on the torture chamber and that they were stained with blood and all that stuff it was quite clear but at the same time you couldn't really say that out loud and people could pretend that that wasn't happening. And of course you didn't want to think it was happening too. And there again, you couldn't think that a government would be like that. And that's one of the problems with this government, I think, because you don't really know what they're up to. You don't know really what they're up to. In that sense, the situation is structurally similar to that of the 70s. People knowing what's going on, but not daring to speak out. Yes. Again, I'm not saying that... No, no, but it's very similar. Yeah, it's, it's similar. Don't you think more? What do you think? I'm not saying that... I'm not equating this government with the dictatorship. Yeah, what more? What but do you the think? The phenomenon of knowing that this is the truth, that we're not going to say it, that happened back then and disappeared. It happened now with Papel Pérez and mm -hmm. It wasn't until Bob spoke out about both issues that things began to change. I find this going very much like the Pérez first government. The government of Peru, I find it very much. The way they act, many things, not as bad perhaps, but in something. I mean, I'm, I'm for this government that says what the human rights, what they've done to the woman, they've given her money, they've done very good things. The, the gay no, marriage, pensions. all those no, pensions, all that I think is, is very good. And uh, But uh, uh, the part of uh, uh, that I find very, very like is with the, with the paper, not so much of the seventh. You know, I would think it goes back to Apold in the in in the, with Peron. Peron had the prince had taken. Then he had a whole group, Democracia, all by Apold, and they all talked with the government exactly the same, exactly right. the same. Huge network. Ne Nacion was a, a wishy-washy paper. My father used to like it for a Prince was more compatible, but then they kicked it out as well. So finally, you had. Nacion and all the recritica was like today the Clarín, una cosita ahí that people like to read it, but it was. And all the rest, the, I can't remember the Democracia for this one, it was several, they had about four or five of them, I remember Democracia well, and they all were taken by a poll, they were invented. Then the same thing with Polsky, I think for me it's Polsky is a poll. Right, right, right. For me, so I find right. it very much more similar to 
yeah, the small scale of the 40s or the 50s was appalled, right? I mean, yeah, for me, uh, it's, a, it's more like appalled. The whole idea, of what, I think the whole idea, then they can't do it completely because life has changed. Right. But if she could go and give bicycles around, she would, because she did work, but they don't have the money to do it. Uh, but the, you know, it's all, it's, it's, it's a whole mentality of the Peronima to Peron and Peron. Right. And the only difference is that they're not military, but Peron probe is military. That, perhaps, is the biggest difference of all. The Peron is all militar. And like I said, I mean, that, the rich. Well, Kirchner was not a military. But the idea of Peron, Peron, yes. Now, Nazi, no, because he's not a military. The, the part of Peron that was Nazi was the military part of him. He had the military part, which was Nazi, and his, then the other part was like women. It's like that type of woman. I have a whole theory about women and Peron. So I think the human part is here. Some of that was a part that had a return to care of the poor, care for the poor. I was well aware, and they used to call him Gomunista, but he was well aware of the poor. And then the military part was the part of the Nazis. This government has the Peron, or the human, human, human Peron that likes to, has all this problem with the poor helping the poor, helping the middle class, and the military part is not there. On the contrary, they've killed the military, and they've killed the the uh, uh, church, which Peron was for the church at first, because that was his power, and then Peron brings for the church. So yeah, I, yeah. I, I, that's the way I see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People sometimes forget that Peron also had a, a policy very much against freedom of the press. Yes. Oh, yeah. Very much. Very much. Very much. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and you couldn't read anything. And, oh, and the radio. The radio oh, right, the radios were all were taken by Peron. Taken by the state, right, right. And the only time he opened it, that was three months before, and the three people talked. One was uh, Frondizi, talked, and we all remember, because <gasps> he talks like, you know, like when after Bush comes, comes uh, Obama, you know, the person that knows how to talk. Then comes Molina, which was Conservador, and Teddy, or Progresista. Um, the three, they talked to the radio first, and we were like enamored of these people. But at last we heard intelligent voices. And then after that comes Bonato, starts talking, starts talking in, in the news, and then comes the revolution of 55. Well, the situation of the Hamas, it's a muy, muy rava la cosa de 25. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, right. like it or not, you can't burn churches, like you can't burn mosques, and you can't burn temples. And they did burn churches. And they burn, did burn the jockey club. And the, the jockey club, I understand people wanting to burn it, but there was another point of it, is that they had these wonderful books. And they threw them all, and they burned most all the books. I know my cousin went and took some books home and gave it back after. But that's 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 the, the that's the ugly part of the that people say that this has never existed. Okay. Right. It strikes me now that in this I mean I might be wrong, Maud would be able to know perhaps some of it. That under Peronism, most people were happy with it. They didn't see anything wrong with it. They didn't think it was anti democratic. They thought it was oh, okay. Oh my one moment, oh, who are you talking about? The low very low class. Well I'm talking about the say forty no. percent of the population. I don't know. I don't know because at that time you, I would say all the all the educated class hated this guy. Except the educated few, class would account for how much of the population? Yeah, I guess very little. I don't know. I don't know. I would say very little. Yeah, I, you I see, I think so. you might have the same problem now that you could lose democracy completely in Argentina and people wouldn't realize. They'd still think it was fine. Oh yeah, that's they true. They wouldn't. No, what are you talking about? We have democracy here. Yeah. Right. I mean, I have a feeling that. Yeah, 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 that would happen, absolutely. And it certainly happened under Peron, didn't it? It certainly happened under Peron. I mean, there was that was the end of democracy in, in Argentina under Peron, right? Or not? Yeah. Now, most people would vote.
violently disagree in Argentina. But there was, there was no democracy for a long time. Yes, I know, I know. It I know. From me, it no. Was no, it starts before Peron. I think, I think that starts. You can say. You can say with, uh, when we had the co coalition, coalition talk, uh, Castillo, Conservador, Radical, Ortiz, was the last semblance of democracy. Mm. I would say even after 1930, yeah. it's true, people say in the 30s, but also it was there where the government takes over. What is the acronym for OEA? OEA is in Spanish, Organización de Estados Americanos, and it's... OAS, yeah. Uh, what is it? OAS. OAS, okay, yeah. right, right. Uh, and, yeah, I wanted to, 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 to highlight the, the, this idea that you're having contributed to most significantly to, to, to the release of Timmerman helped bring down the, the dictatorship uh, because there were well, two or three key factors besides the Falkland Islands, which was oh, the yeah. last attempt. Besides that, oh, yeah. the Human Rights Commission visit to, of the OAS, yeah, yeah, yeah. the Timmerman case, yeah, were exactly. two key things that brought down the dictatorship. And, and, and in both, you guys were involved. Yeah. In, in a very significant way, and yeah. so sometimes when, when when I read the letters or I read interviews, and I say, well, yeah. uh, it's hard to deal with the fact that we could have done more, or, or there's this thought or, that I could have done more. Well, I think that more was done by having been involved in these two resonant cases. Yeah, well, certainly, the the, certainly the military realized because they completely banned. You had this extraordinary situation where respectable newspapers like La Nacion published the government's reply to a report that they never published that nobody could see. Yeah. And the only, only were that, uh, that Emilio Mignoni managed to bring into the country. I think he was just lucky he got them in because I don't think he smuggled them in, he just brought them in the suitcase. I don't know how many, wow. 20 or 30. Mm -hmm. And I remember uh, this guy we were talking about, uh, Tato Joffrey, Joffrey. Joffrey. Tato Joffrey. I say, well, this is going to make a difference. Once this report is published, in, he said, they're never ever going to allow that. They'll never allow that. Right. Because he was right. Yeah. Someone, in one of, the, one of the letters, someone said, when, when Perez Esquivel was given the Nobel Prize, someone said uh, it should have been awarded to Cox. Oh, and, right. and, and I think that like the, 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 the stars, as it were, of human rights in terms of world visibility are, yeah, Perez Esquivel, Madres, uh, Timmerman. But behind, or, uh, or behind this star Hollywood-like uh, stories, yeah, exactly, yeah. Uh, and, and I'm sorry if I embarrass you both, but it's what you guys did. No, it's not mothers. Ma mothers would not have existed exactly. with, without, without, without exactly. your work. Timmerman would not have been released. Yeah, obviously. Yeah, uh, the Human Rights Commission from the OAS, well, they might have visited, but Things would have been so different, and yeah. that's yeah, why I feel there were other people like Marshall Mayer played an enormous role, enormous, enormous. Yeah, role. he had, a, he yes. had a Marshall yes, Mayer had a, minimize. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Marshall Mayer had a, also audience that was listening to him, which is a Jewish organization. But, but those, I, and I find it really outstanding that that. that Three decades later, that you had such a key role in the 70s, and then three decades later, when the government is about to do something that's going to turn it again, again, again into almost a dictatorship, because had they seized, it is strange. Know, like, I can remember the feeling that, and I felt a little bit like the same way because it was difficult to do because the climate in Argentina at that moment. I arrive in Argentina. And there are many things that are delightful after all the time. We, we, we enjoyed and, and we're, we're back. 